securing Active Directory domain services. In this, first we will see the implementing of account security. Account security, account security in Windows Server 2016. Now, account security features in Windows Server 2016 includes the password policies. Password policies where we can configure the different policies related to the passwords. Uh, password uh, history, password minimum uh, character, uh, password uh, complexity options, and then uh, account lockout policies we have. Account lockout policies defines the policies for the lockout, like uh, how many wrong passwords we can at, uh, we can uh, afford, we can afford how how much wrong attempts. Then fine grained password policies are also there. The fine grained password policies are defining different policies for the different uh, groups. We can say, in uh, when we configure the policy, simply we configure the policy for all the domain. When we configure the policy for the, it applies on the whole domain. But fine grained policy we can use to configure a particular group on only particular group. Then same as we have the protected users option, the group which is uh, used to add the members to protect the users, authentication policies we can configure. We can also use authentication policies in you. Now password policies, what are the password policies we have? As I said, the password policies requirements by using the following settings. For example, enforce password histories, maximum password age, minimum password age, minimum password length, password complexity requirements are there that does not contain name or username, must have at least six characters, contains characters from three of the following uh, four groups like uppercase, lowercase, numeric and special characters. This is what the password policy. Then we have account lockout policy which is uh, define the account lockout policy and whether account should be locked automatically after several failed attempts to sign in. Then to configure these policy settings, you must consider the account lockout duration also and the account lockout threshold and reset the account lockout counter. These three options will be there. We just first define the account lockout threshold that defines like how many wrong attempts we can afford or we can accept. And after that, our account will be locked. The account user account will be locked and it will be locked for the duration, account lockout duration. And it will not accept the correct password also within that duration. But we can set the reset account lockout counter after a particular time in which time the real password, the, uh, the original password will work. Then account lockout policies provide a level of security but also provide an opportunity for denial of service attack. It also provides the denial of service opportunity for denial of service attack. That means if suppose some attacker wants to stop some user to work, like if the user, uh, the attacker wants that this user should not do work, so what they can do, they can try any wrong attempts. They can try wrong attempts of the password for those users and those accounts for those users will be locked and they will be locked for that duration of the time. And then for that particular duration, no user can do anything because their accounts are locked. Locked by the attacks, uh, attacker, attacker uh, tried what the wrong passwords multiple times and the account is locked. So it can do the denial of service attack also. Then we have Kerberos policies also. Now Kerberos policy you will see only in Windows the uh, Active Directory servers, Windows Server 2016 or Windows Server, any Windows Server operating system. In a client operating system, you will not see this Kerberos policies because the Kerberos is the authentication protocol is for the Windows Server 2003. After Windows Server 2003, this is the main Kerbero, uh, main authentication protocol used. This Kerberos policy settings determine timing for Kerberos tickets and other events. So the Kerberos defines that how the users are going to be authenticated to the Active Directory and these policies define that how the uh, what will be the timing for the Kerberos tickets and other events. For example, we have in that policy, in the Kerberos policies, we have the password uh, enforce user logon restriction that will be enabled by default because we are using the Kerberos for authentication. Then maximum lifetime for the service ticket is 600 minutes. The ticket which is given by the service applications 
to the users to use those applications within the domain then the maximum lifetime for the user ticket it is 10 hours which is given by the domain controller which is given by the KDC KDC is the Kerberos key distribution center and that key distribution center gives the user to use the resources within the domain and that ticket will be valid for 10 hours then maximum lifetime for the user ticket renewal is 7 days after 10 hours it is it is uh, uh, it is unvalid but if the user is not logging out then it will keep uh, it will keep logging in uh, and then after 7 days the, the ticket must be renewed that means it is the maximum time that means like uh, if the user logs in it will get the ticket of uh, 10 hours but uh, it can log in after the 10 hours also if it wants to renew the ticket then it is, uh, the user has to just re uh, log out and log in and otherwise if it is not logging uh, logging out so it will see the notification that the key is expired you have to re-log in but still if the user is not logging out after seven till seven days then the ticket will uh, the user will automatically log out and it is not able to use anything in unless after 10 hours it is not able to use any resources within the domain because the ticket for the user is invalid then maximum tolerance for the computer clock synchronization is five minutes this Kerberos protocol is depending on the time stamps. so if the tickets uh, sent by the KDC to or uh, to the active directory domain controller if the time is more than five minutes more than five minutes that means suppose the KDC is sent the ticket to the user and then user trying to show the ticket to the uh, domain controller so within that it is having a different of five minute times then user is not able to log in so when the user gets the ticket the timestamp is the server's timestamp and then the user when the user present the ticket to active directory domain controller it uses the timestamps of the client machine so if the client machine timing is different more than five minutes then what it will not be able to log in the user will not be able to log in so in an active directory domain uh, all the client machines time must be synchronized with the active directory domain controller it will not afford it will not tolerate more than five minutes this five minute will be enough like if suppose any hacker or cracker try to re uh, try to co compromise the ticket and try to uh, generate the fake ticket or add some uh, something into the ticket and try to present the ticket modify the ticket so five minute is not enough to modify those things those, those tickets and all that so it is a it is a enough time not enough time to modify any ticket for hacker or any any cracker so that is why the default time is five minute but we can change all of these settings these are the default settings like 600 minutes 10 hours 7 days or 5 minutes these are the default settings but we can change it Kerberos claims and compound authentication for DAC requires Windows Server 2012 or newer domain controller this DAC means dynamic access control so if we are using dynamic access control so it is the Kerberos will do uh, it is dynamic access control it is actually claim based author, claim based authentication where you can claim the users claim the resources based on their properties so windows server 2012 or newer domain controller only these domain controller have this dac option dac features available this dynamic access control we have only available after server 2012 protecting groups in active directory domain services now we have restricted groups restricted group that means you can control the membership for local groups on workstation and server uh, and servers by using the following attributes members and members of we have the uh, we have this option we you cannot use this with domain groups we cannot use this with the domain group we can use this by uh, local groups local groups on the uh, on a workstation and server by using the following attributes that means we can restrict the groups we can make the members of that local groups of the local system we can add the members in that or we can make the group member of any other group but we cannot do this by using the domain groups so for that for the domain groups we have the protected user groups this provides the additional protection against the compromise of credential during the authentication process 
and members of this group automatically have a non-configurable protection, uh, non-configurable protection applied to their accounts. So there is a group called protected group or protected users group and if you want to make sure that the user gets additional security, additional protection, then we can add the user into this protected users group. Now remember this group provides the additional protection against the compromise of the credential. That means when the user logs into the client side, their credentials will be, uh, will be cached there. But when the user is member of this protection group, protected group, users group, the user, the user's information, the credentials will not be cached on the client side. And members of this group automatically have non-configurable protection applied to their accounts. So we have restricted groups, we have protected users group also for protecting the users group. Then we have fine-grained password policies and lockout policies. You can use these fine-grained password policies to uh, specify multiple password policies within a single domain. That means when, when we configure the normal password policies which we have seen uh, previously, so if we, we configure, if we configure the policy, it will going to apply on the whole domain. You are not able to configure the policy for the different user groups. But fine-grained policy, you have option to configure the policy for the different groups. Apply only to the user object, inter-organizational person objects or global security groups. So we can apply the group policy, this fine-grained policy directly uh, to some user object, inter-organizational person objects or a global security groups. Do not apply directly to an OU. Remember, it is not going to apply on any OU. Do not interfere with custom password filters that you might use in the same domain. And you will also not interfere with the custom password uh, policies which we configured in that domain. Now tools for creating the password settings objects. Password setting objects that means PSO we say and this is for the, uh, the fine grained policy. That means when we configure the fine grained policy we actually create a object, a password setting object and we can do that after server 2012 and newer operating system it provides the two tools like we can do that by using the powershell command line like new ad fine grain password policy to create new and add the fine grain policy password policy or a subject by adding the user or group into that object uh, into that password object uh, pso or we can do that by using the active directory administrative center graphically So this is our domain controller here. Now the policies which we set, the password policies and other policies, we can set it from the local security policy option. Now this local security policy option, that means it is going to apply only for this local system. That means even it is a domain controller, but the policy will be configured here the password policies or account lockout policy or other policies it is going to apply only for this domain controller if we want to configure the policy for the whole domain then we will configure the policy through the group policy management like for example when you go to local security policy so we see here the account policies in that we have Kerberos policies, uh, password policies, account lockout policies and Kerberos policies. Then we have local policies related to audit, related to rights management, related to security, security options. Then the other policies we have. Now these policies we configured, it is only for the local security. Local, uh, local machine that means only for this machine. If we want to configure this policy for the whole domain, then we will go to group policy management. Now, if we want to configure the policy for the whole uh, domain, then we can edit the policy of this domain policy, default domain policy. Or if suppose we have different OUs here and we want to configure the policy for separate OUs, then we can do that by adding the group policy object into that OU. So we have OUs here 
So if we want to assign the different policy for different OUs, then we can create the GPU here, like create the GPU in this domain and link it here. Name it for accordingly. Then we can modify the policy here to change the password policies. So we can apply the policy for the whole domain or we can apply the policy only for the specific uh, OU. Like I want to change the policy for the whole domain so I will add it here. And under the computer configurations because the password policy related to the computers, we will go to policies, windows settings and under the windows settings we have the security settings. Now when you open the security settings you will see all these things like the account policy, local policy, all these policies. So when you open the account policies, you will see the password policy, lockout policy and Kerberos policy. So account policies are set to this. This is by default configured for the domain that uh, enforced password history is for 24. That means it remembers the history of the password till 24 histories. That means once you use one password, then you cannot use the password. You, you cannot use the same password after 24 changes, uh, before 24 changes. That means suppose you use A now, then next time when you change the password, you cannot use A again. You have to use B. Then third time when you try to change the password, you try to use the A again, then you cannot use A again because you have to, uh, you, you cannot use it because the history says 24. So it remembers the 24 histories of your password. That means it remembers A, it remembers B, it remembers C and it will goes on till 24. So you cannot use the same password if suppose your password is your favorite password. This policy is for those users, they feel like uh, they are they're having some favorite password and they are always want to use that password. And if suppose someone guesses the password, then they can, uh, they, uh, that they, they can uh, compromise the account of that user. So administrator don't want that their accounts should be compromised. So administrator do that, uh, do what? It, uh, it forces the users to change the password every time when they change. That means whenever they change the password, they have to use the new password. Otherwise, it will not be applied. It will not allow to use the same password. Uh, it, will, uh, it will ask to change the password every time. And history says 24. That means it will remember the previous password of 24 previous password. And after when you reach up to, to, up to 24, then you can use the same password which, we ha which you have used uh, before 24 changes. But what if suppose the password is a uh, user does not change the password. If user says, okay, if I don't change the password, then what? Then the password will expire after 42 days. So it, if, we, if the user does not change the password, then it will automatically expire after 42 days. This is the default, but we can change. We can change, we can increase or decrease it. Same as we can increase and decrease this setting also. So if the password, if the user does not change the password, then it is going to uh, change, it is going to expire after 42 days. And the user has to change the password. Now, when the user has to change the password after 42 days, then it, it is not possible for the user to use the same password again, because the history says 24. Now, if user says, okay, I want to use my same password, I want to use my favorite password. So user will do what? User can do one more thing. It can change the password 24 times within the, within the same day, within the same time. That means just after 42 days when the password expires, users change the password, change the password 24 times and then use the same password again. User can do that because if the password, it changed one password, then it changed two, three, four, five, six, seven, and 24 times, and then it will use the favorite password because the password is, is, the, is a favorite password for him. Now, for those kind of users, those getting more smart, we have this policy. It says minimum password age. Minimum password age says one days. That means user has to take the password for one days at least. Like once I change the password now, at 1234 then after 24 hours I can change my password I cannot change the password till one day so user has to wait for one day at least to change the password again now it is default one day but we can increase it 
we can increase it we can increase more days here then user used to use passwords very simple password because they don't want to remember the password they, it's hard to remember sometime user try to use a simple passwords small passwords for those users we have the password policy says seven characters we can increase the characters that means by default it is saying seven characters that means user cannot use any password less than seven characters and also this password complexity requirement is also enabled that means if the user try to use a password at least even seven character also if user try to use one two three four five six seven then it will not allow the user to give that password because the complexity requirement is enabled by default and this policy defined that user has to use a mix of a mix of different characters like words numbers letters it has to use special characters uh, uh, characters a b c d it has to use numbers 1 2 3 4 it has to use uh, the special character like at the rate dollar sim, uh, hash whatever so it has to make the complex password otherwise it is not going to accept then this last policy is actually disabled this policy is not that secure it makes the password unsecure when you enable this it will make the password unsecure if you go to the explanation of this policy it will show you that the security setting determines whether the operating system is store password using reversible encryption or not it says here that the policy provides support for application that use protocols that requires knowledge of the user's password for authentication purpose and storing the password using reversible encryption is essentially the same as uh, storing the plain text version of the password and for this reason this policy should never be enabled unless application requirements outweigh the need to protect the password information so this policy is for the uh, for the uh, for the scenario where we have some applications and that application try to authenticate the users and for that they has to see the password they has to see the password because they don't understand the encryption hashing of the windows windows uses ntlm version 2 uh, hashing algorithm and if it is not understanding the application won't understand those uh, those in uh, uh, hashing or encryption algorithm so those for those we need to configure we have to configure the password in a plain text for those application so when we enable this policy it will store the password just like in a plain text so that the application can understand the password and that is why it says that it's this policy should not be enabled unless the application says uh, application need it now when it is enabled so your password will be as a plain text and then the application's responsibility will be to secure your password the application uh, uh, the, uh, the application will try different algorithm different methods like chap challenge handshake authentication protocol ies internet authentication service or other authentication protocols to secure your password otherwise your password will not be secure so the policy is disabled by default it is not enabled and we should not enable unless it is required then this is the account lockout policy where this is the account lockout duration this is the account lockout counter uh, reset counter and this is what the account lockout threshold here we define the threshold these two policies will be automatically defined that means here we define that how many wrong attempts we can afford if suppose i say we can afford two wrong attempts it says account will lock after out after two attempts so these two options these two policies will be automatically configured for the default value of 30 minutes as you see the two values are configured by the 30 minutes default policy now account lockout duration is 30 minute and reset account lockout counter after is also 30 minute but we can decrease this uh, reset counter uh, this is the duration this is the total duration where the account will be locked where the real password the original password will also not work that means if the user try to use the wrong password so it will lock for uh, 
after two invalid attempts and it will lock for the 30 minutes but within the 30 minutes the actual password will also not work but if you want then you can reduce the time for the reset counter that means if I reduce the time here to 20 minutes so uh, account will be locked for 30 minutes but after 20 minutes user can use its own real password the original password if it knows the password but if it is try to uh, use the wrong password again do the two uh, invalid attempt again then again it will add the 30 minute that means again it will lock the account for more 30 minutes but this is the total duration if I reduce this then it will reduce this lockout counter also now the password policies which we saw here it applies to all the user including the administrator also but this lockout policy will not apply to administrator it will not apply to administrator because if the administrator lock himself or suppose we as we know that it is used by the attacker to do the denial of service also that means user will try wrong attempts for the user and the uh, account for the user will be locked and the user will not be able to do anything so if the use the attacker is do if the attacker do this for the administrator account then what the administrator account will also be locked and then what administrator will not do anything uh, will not be able to do anything so that is what it kind of denial of service attack so this policy is not applied for the administrator account so this policy only for the normal users and not for the administrator account that means if you try to see it, we have set it to two invalid attempt and we have configured it for the domain so it is going to apply for the whole domain I will update the policy first and uh, then we will try to log in and try to use the wrong attempts remember it is not for the administrator it is not going to apply on administrator account so I will log out here I will try to log in as a user 1 here and with the wrong password it is a one wrong, uh, wrong attempt then this is the second attempt which is wrong now I am trying to use the third wrong attempt now it is saying that the referenced account is currently locked out and may not be logged on to now if I use the real password it will still not work this is the real password it is still not working so it will be available the real password I can use only after 15 minutes we have set the account will be locked for the whole 15 uh, okay the whole 20 minutes or 30 minutes but the administrator account will not be locked administrator account we can still use so in that case if the account is locked for the user then user can do what user have to user can wait for the time the time when the policy says that the account will be available or user has to call the administrator to unlock the account so it is for the 15 minutes so after the 15 minutes the account will be automatically enabled but if it is a long time then the administrator the uh, user has to call the administrator that the account is locked and the administrator will do what it will enable the account for that user so administrator will go to the user account property this is the user which is locked and it will go to the account and uh, it here it says unlock the account because this account is currently locked out on this active directory domain controller so you just click administrator will click here to unlock the account and apply now what the account is now unlocked and now user can log in without waiting on this 
15 or 30 minutes now I will remove this so when I remove this threshold to 0 other timing will be also removed then this is what the Kerberos policy and this is the default values we have we can change these values if we like this is the default values we have we can change those values then for the restricted groups we have this restricted group uh, option available here in the group policy so we can add the restricted groups here we can browse and add the restricted groups here to make them as a restricted group then we have the local groups in the in the local system we have the local groups here which is built in groups these are the local groups where we can add the user into these local groups and these will be only available for the local then for the user's security for the additional security for the user we have this protected user group here and as you see here in the description it says the member of these groups are afforded additional protection against the authentication security threats so whatever the authentication security threats are there it provides the additional security so if we want to provide the additional security for some user account then we can add the user account into this into this group we can add the user here we can make the user member of this group then we can make the fine grain policy by using this active directory administrative center so under the tool we can open the active directory administrative center and under this this is our domain we will go to the system and under the system we will go to this password setting container now we are under the password setting container here we can create the fine grain policy object that is password setting object we can click on new and create the password setting object and this is the password uh, this is a fine grain policy so first you will mention the name that means uh, this is the pso for mumbai uh, or i will say marketing users or i will just name it as a marketing one then you will mention the procedure procedures that means uh, if you create different policies uh, these PSOs different fine grain policy objects then what you can make the procedures like this one is one I say if it is one that means it, it will override the other one if you see here it says password settings with the lower precedence will uh, number will override once override the ones with the higher number so lower number and higher number will be uh, override by the higher number so you can mention the number here accordingly when you make the, when you make the multiple policies then this is the policy this is a different policy you configured for the different group so whatever you want like enforce minimum password length you can make different length like you can make i will make 8 here then number of password history is 24 is there i will make okay only 5 history should be there a stored password in the reversible encryption it is not secure so i am not going to enable this enforce minimum password age i will increase this to 5 days uh, maximum password age i will say 30 days then account lockout policies we can configure it is not enabled we can enable this how much policy uh, how much time you want uh, two invalid attempts uh, then reset and the duration duration for the uh, minimum is 30 both are 30 but we can also set until an administrator manually unlock the account so it will unlock uh, it will only unlock when the administrator unlock 
then we can add this description uh, any description we want and here we can add directly apply to now here we can add the user or group which we want to apply the policy remember we can't apply it on the ous just like we use the group policy object it is a different thing it is a group policy uh, it is a fine grain policy object so we apply this policy directly on the user or a group so we add here whatever the user or group we want so i have one uh, uh, group created here for marketing users so i select the group here and this is applied to this group now so this policy is going to apply only for this group rest of the users will use this uh, other policies other policies which is applied on the domain and then we can say okay and this is the fine grain policy setting object we have created here now the pso procedures and resultant pso pso is the password setting object so when we configure this fine grain policy uh, password setting object so how the procedures work and how the resultant policy will be so if multiple psos apply to a user the psos that you directly apply take precedence rather than the psos that you apply by using the group membership that means one policy we have applied directly the user and one policy we apply to the group and this user is also member of that group so the policy which will apply is what the directly applied policy then the pso with the lowest precedence will win that means whatever the lower lowest precedence like 1 2 3 4 so one will win over other policies and that will be applied and if two policies if two psos have the same procedures then smallest object guid wins so every object has a unique id and it is it is increasing when we are creating the objects and updating when the when we make some changes so if we have mistakenly given the same procedures number to two policies one or uh, like i have given 10 and same uh, procedures number i have given to other policy 10 so if it is having a conflict so then the policy will be applied which is having the smallest object id uid object guid then to evaluate a user object to see which pso has been applied you can use the msds resultant pso active directory attribute so there is a attribute in the users property which we can see to to verify that which pso object is applying on that particular user this attributes you can see in the attribute editor to view the effective pso that ads applies to a user open the active directory users and computer and on view you have to f f uh, first select the advanced features and then open the properties of the user and on the attribute editor tab view the msds resultant policy uh, pso attribute if you have configured the show uh, constructed attributes option under the filter option so if we want to see that which pso is applying on the user we can see by using this okay first uh, if you go to the users property or any any objects property you will see all these options here but there is no option for attributes no tab for attributes here now it will come only when you go for view and use this advanced uh, advanced feature options then you will see more containers here and also when you go to check the user users property you will see more tabs here and in these more tabs you will see objects here in the object tab you will see the detail about the object and also you will see attribute editor and in this attribute editor you will see that ds ds pso and you have to look for it
so in filter uh, in this uh, attribute editor you have to enable the filter also the filter for the constructed objects and then only you can see otherwise it is not showing here under the msds we can see the resultant pso here this options is it is not show when we add if you we don't add the filter here so it is not applying any here because this uh, uh, resultant policy we have applied for this user because this user is not a member of that group so it is not saying it is saying not set it is member of the domain user group now there is one user here which is the member of that group where we have applied the policy this user is member of that marketing group and this user uh, this group we have applied the policy so when we go to the attribute enable the filter it is enabled and when we go and check the resultant policy this object resultant pso so we can see the name of that it is coming from this this is a this is the pso that is marketing one which we created this is the password setting container under the password setting container it is under the cm con system container of the domain site.com so this is what this is the pso which is applied to this user so if we have multiple psos applied then the 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 main pso that is the the one which is applying on the particular user we can see it from here it will show only the uh, applied it it will show only the pso which is applying to that user object then account security options in 2016 we have protected user group as i said the protected user is in the uh, in the protected user group uh, it it protects the users in the protected users group prevent locally cached user profile and credentials that means the users which is member of this group is uh, their uh, their uh, passwords their credentials will not be cached locally on the client side it requires a kerberos authentication limits G tgt to 4 hours that means it also limit the ticket time out it only limit to 4 hours no offline signing that means if suppose the domain controller is not available still you can log in to your client machine because the password informations are cached but if it is not available because of this uh, membership that means if the user is member of this protected group so the caching is not there so without the domain if the domain member is not uh, the domain controller is not available the user will not be able to log in so no offline signing Windows 8.1, Windows 10, Windows Server 2012, R2, and Windows Server 2016 domain members only, and it is available only for these operating system. Then authentication policies we have. This is configured as the authentication policy object in ADDS and applied to user services or computer accounts. We can configure the authentication policies. We can create the custom TGT policy, and also we can use this claims DAC. Uh, claims that means the dynamic access control for custom conditions. Then authentication policy Celios. This is also an ADDS object and centrally applied authentication policy to multiple object. That means it is also same as the authentication policy, but it is centrally applied. This uh, it is uh, centrally applied to the multiple objects. Additional claims allows administrator to configure file access per cell. That means we can also add additional claim based authentication. for these policies these celio policies then configuring the user account policies that is for the local security policy account settings we can configure the local security policy by using the the sys uh, secpol.msc command uh, command from the run or we can apply to a local user accounts then the whatever the policy we applied for the local security policy settings it is going to apply only for the local user accounts not for the domain user accounts then group policy account settings group policy account configure uh, the group policy settings configured with the group policy management console and it is applied to the domain 
Active Directory local. Uh, uh, it is applied to the all accounts in Active Directory domain services and local accounts on computer joined to the domain also. And can can apply only once in a domain and in only one GPU. And take precedence over local security policy settings. So whatever you configure in the local security policy, it is going to take the precedence, and the domain policy will apply first. That means if I am working on Windows 10 machine, so I can use to apply the policy for the local system also. Local system that means I will go to my local security policies. I will go to Control Panel. Under the Administrative Tools, I have Local Security Policies. So in the local security policy, I have all those policies available for this local system. That means the account policies, the account policies. That means password policies. All these password policy. Remember, the Kerberos policy is not here because it is not a domain controller. It is not a server machine. Then account lockout policy is also here. So these policies are also here. We can configure these policies, but this policy which we configured here. these policies will only apply for the local users local user on this local system and if any user try to log into this local system it it will apply these policies but if we have configured something else on the domain controller if this machine is a member of the domain and we configure something other policy some other policies on the domain so that policy will apply and this policy will not apply that means in this local policy i configured the login uh, failed login attempts of two times and in the domain i configured the failed login attempts as a three times so three time will apply the two time will not apply if i configured the minimum ca password character is seven here and in a domain controller in a domain policy in a group policy i have configured it for the 10 then the 10 will apply and this one uh, this seven will not apply because the domain policy will precedence it will take precedence for this Uh, local policy so whatever policy we configure here in the domain we can configure it from group policy management console here also we have local security policy for the local computer but this computer is a domain controller so we can configure it from this once for the whole domain like directly for the default domain policy or for separate ous we can configure for the separate ou for the separate gpu but once in a gpu we can configure so we can configure it directly from edit computer configuration policies windows settings and security settings same policies are available here like account policies password policies lockout policies and kerberos policies and this will be applied all over the domain all over the domain and every client machine on the domain and it will take the precedence over the local policy if it is configured anything on the local machine now we have uh, the enhancing password authentication with windows hello and mfa windows hello is also available here and mfa is like multi factor authentication so to enhance the security of the authentication process you can use the windows hello features this is available in windows now for using a biometric based sign in to the windows so windows hello is basically using the biometric based sign in then we have microsoft passport and it is a leverage windows hello and tpm that means it uses Windows Hello that is biometric and also it uses the TPM chip trusted platform module and it uses both to do the authentication then also we can use the azure multi factor authentication it is to enhance the account security by adding the second factor of verification and can be used in a cloud or for an on premises application also that means when you try to log in then you will provide the your username and password then also you have to provide something else like for example you will get the otp you will get the call so based on that you will get the authentication so for example how windows hello works user can do what user can use the application directly to connect the server or user can use the pin or windows hello 
and also with the TPM uh, like Microsoft Passport to connect uh, the application or server. So if server user want to use an application then it has to authenticate itself. So it can use the Windows Hello feature like it can use a PIN or it can use the Windows Hello feature. Windows Hello feature is like biometric authentication. It can have a fingerprint scanner. It can have a face detection. I, I, uh, 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 retina scanning also it can support. Then within the with also using the TPM TPM chip uh, IC is the TPM chip which can use uh, to configure the Microsoft Passport. So including with the Windows Hello and TPM it combines to be a uh, Microsoft Passport and then it can use an application authenticated to the server then also it can use the two way authentication two factor authentications multi factor authentication like it can get the text message like when you log in you will get the text message in that you will get the uh, uh, you will get the code and then you will get the code from the text message and then you enter the code again to log in or you can get the phone call also so when you log in with your username and password you will get the second authentication by using the call in the call it will say that the the second code so you will add the code into it and then you will log in then you can get the code by using the mobile app also so you can have a separate mobile app so whenever you authenticate whenever you try to authenticate you will get the uh, you will get the uh, the authentication code on your mobile app the special app and then you will enter the code into your system to get the authentication so this is what the enhancement of the authentication where you can in enhance your authentication by adding the multi-factor or windows hello features windows hello features are like uh, the features are for the biometric settings right now we have these settings available in windows so under the setting when you go to accounts you have sign in options here and under the sign in options you have these different options and these are called windows hello like face detection and it will only work with the specific uh, specific hardware that is you need to have a specific hardware a camera face detection camera then you can have a fingerprint reader also so that the fingerprint scanner can also work so these are the uh, windows hello even we can use the pin also windows hello pin you can use a pin like you use it on your mobile four digit pin so these are all windows hello features right now it is available in windows 10 then implementing audit authentication audit authentication that means auditing about the uh, logon events so account logon and logon events what happens the account logon events that means the system that authenticate the account register these events so for auditing what we do we generate the we log the events and we monitor the events so that we can see what is happening in the system who is logging in and who is logging successfully or logging is getting failed so first it is account logon events now this account logon events generate the system it is generate the, it is generated in the system that authenticate the account register these events and for domain accounts domain controllers do this and for local accounts local computer do this so when you enable this account local local uh, logon events this policy then it will do what it will generate the logon events and it is generated by the domain controller for the domain and for the local machine it is generated by the local computer then the logon events that means the machine at or to uh, to which a user logged on register these events that means when the machine when you logged into some machine so that machine will register these events an interactive logon user system and network logon server that means this is your domain controller active directory domain services this is your domain controller so all the account logon events that means it is going to be uh, logged in the domain controller and the logon events will be logged on the client machine and also logon events will be logged on the uh, on a server when you are logging in through the network now these are the policies we have in the policies in, in the network security policies we have this so first I will show you those policies like if you want to see those policies here it is under the local system uh, uh, under the every local system under the local security policies
we have the audit policy and there the local policy these are the audit policies we have audit policies are we have that audit uh, account logon events and then this is the logon event policy this is account logon event and this is the logon event policy remember this is not a domain controller this is the local server uh, this is the local windows 10 machine the same policy if we want to apply it on the whole domain controller on the whole domain then we will apply this policy on the domain controller group policy object if i apply here it is going to apply only for this local system it is not going to apply for the whole domain so if i want to enable the same policies on the domain then i will go to domain controller and add the policy into group policy object so for applying the policy for the whole domain in the group policy management console i will edit the policy here under the computer configuration policies windows settings security settings and under the local policies we have these audit policies so this is the logon events and this is the uh, this is the account logon event and this is the logon event policy now both these policies when you enable when you go to check they have only what success or failure so if you define then you can define whether the user successfully logged or the user get failed so it will generate the log related to success or failure and where it is going to generate the log it is going to generate the log in the log uh, event viewer it is going to generate the log under the event viewer and you can see those logs under the event viewer you will see those logs here under the event viewer but where you will see the logs it depends the lo uh, it depends the policy which you enable it depends the policy which you enable that means if you enable the policy for the logon events for the logon events so it is going to be generated on the client system or even the server logon uh, it is going to uh, enable on the network logon also uh, in a network logon it is going to generate on the server and for the account logon event it is going to generate on the domain controller so scoping and auditing policies are very uh, simple like domain default domain controller policy when you apply on this group policy object so account logon events that means all the domain controller uh, the domain controller will have the logon events and for custom gpu in a local computer you will generate the logon events and that will generate the logon events for the uh, remote desktop server ous or hr clients ou so the scope for this logon event policy will be only for the ous or the scope for the domain uh, the account logon event policy is the whole domain controller then configuring managing service accounts now what is the service accounts we have sometimes application requires resources access and for this purpose you can create domain or local accounts to manage such access however this might compromise the security now the following service accounts are there that means if any service is running on the system those services do what they need the resources they need the resources from the system the service accounts job is to provide those resources because when the user when the service try to get the resources the system says try, uh, system says authenticate yourself to get the resources now for that we have the system uh, services account these are the default account we have like local system account local service account and network service account all the services in the system is running based on these service accounts they are getting the resources from these service accounts now local system account is most privileged account and is still is still vulnerable if compromised that means this account has the most privilege that means more than administrator it can do edit anything in the system and that is why it is still vulnerable and it can be compromised then local service account is the least privilege account it does not have any uh, not uh, not have many uh, privilege may not have enough permission to access all the required resources for the service then network services same as like the local service account not able to access the network resources so for the network resources we have network service account and it can access network resources with proper credentials also so if it is having the proper credential then it can access the network resources also these are the default service accounts we have 
and we can see all the services we are having in the system they are running based on, uh, on upon these service accounts so if you go to a local system or a domain controller if you go to the services services console you can see these services are using these accounts log on as you can see the log on as local system accounts this is this service is using network service account this service is using network service account most of them is using the local system account this is using local service account so you have multiple services which uses the different accounts these three accounts now if we have created or we have installed some application and that application services required to run based on some different uh, 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 services like different privilege like i don't want to give the application a full privilege but if i use the local service account for the service it is not able to get the resources which i need then uh, my application also need the resources which is on the network so if i use a local service account still it is not able to use the network resources but if i use a network service then it is only using the it is only accessing the network services it is not having the privilege to access the local resources so maybe my application and, uh, uh, and the my service which i am installing in my system it is needing this uh, privilege custom privilege custom privilege that may have some privilege as local system account as a network service account or some uh, uh, some uh, not more but uh, more than this local service account privilege then user do what the administrator do what they create the domain or local account for that they use a uh, normal security account they create the account normal account like we create and use that account for the services give the privilege to that account and use that account to the services but there are the challenges here extra administration effort to manage the service account password remember every account has to have a password and the password is going to be expired based on the policy we have configured so if we configure the custom account for the service then what that account will be normal account and the account will do what it will uh, it is a normal account that means it has a password and the password may expire even if it is a blank password it is expired and if it is expired then what we without our note uh, un, uh, without our known like we don't know what happen in the background the password is expired and the service is not able to use the resources and the application will not work so this is the challenge then difficulty in determining where a domain based account is used as a service account or not we cannot we can use a domain based account or local based account this is also a difficulty then extra administration effort to manage the spn that means service principal name based on the service so we have to manage that also and that we that uh, that everything we have to manage manually then for that thing we have the managed service account we can use the managed service account that is msa and this do what it automate the password and spn management for service accounts that services and application uses and requires a windows server 2008 r2 or newer installed with this net dot net framework 3.5 version or active directory module for powershell because we we can create the service account by using the powershell and it is recommended to run the adds configured at the windows server 2008 r2 functional level or higher and also our functional level for the forest and domain must be higher than the windows server 2008 r2 otherwise we are not going to use the service account and what are the group managed service account so we have a group managed service account also it extend the capability of the standard managed service account that means the enabling managed service account uh, for use on more than one computer in the domain and storing the msa authentication information on the domain controller now that means if we create the managed service account it is only going to be used for the local system it is not going to use in the domain for the other systems but when you create the group managed service account we can use this to manage the service account uh, you we can use this service account to uh, on the other domains also uh, on other machines of the domain also now to support this group managed service account uh, we have to make sure that we have must at least one windows server 2012 or newer domain controller then also must have a kds root key created for the domain 
so if we want to create this group manage service account we have to first install the kds root key and we have to create that also we have to have this windows server 2012 r2 or newer version of domain controller now how we can configure the managed service account and group managed service account for doing that first step is to uh, for the managed service account or group managed service account is to create the master key kds master key by using the powershell command and the command is add kds root key now before this service account feature what the administrators do they actually nor create the normal accounts like these accounts they create these normal accounts and do what give the privilege to those account and then go to properties of these services and go to log on and by default it is using the local system account so they what they do add the account here like what i am doing here and whatever the password for that account so they do just like this to add the service account now the service will run based on that user account but we have a problem here that this uh, account need to be update the password and spn every time so it is not working so then what we have now the service account uh, we have a service account feature and we can create the service account and that service account we can see here under the manage service account uh, uh, container so when we create the account we see the account here now for creating it we can create only manage service account that will work only for this machine where we created or we can create the domain a group managed service account which can work on all the other machines also that means we can install the account we can install this on the other uh, other servers also and we can use it on other server services also now for that first we have to make sure that we have added the ada uh, kds key so for that we'll go to powershell and we have to add kds root key now for adding the kds root key we have the option here uh, to get it immediately like we want to get the key immediately so we can uh, we can do what we can add this option that add kds root key effective time uh, effective immediately now there is a problem here immediately no it is not going to apply immediately it is not going to available the key immediately it will take at least by default 10 hours so by default when you create the key it is going to create the key and available the key after 10 hours so when i create right now it is it is going to be available after 10 hours why it is taking 10 hours because it wants to update the key information in all the other domain controllers and the machine in the domain so for that it will take the 10 hours by default but if you don't want to wait for the 10 hours to be uh, to be use that key the key will be created but it will not be available you will not be able to create the group managed service account if you want because the key is not available because it is going to be available after 10 hours so what we can do we can use the effective time option here now in the effective time option what we do here now what we will do here we will add this command get date here now get date means this command will get the current date whatever the date what right now we have so it is going to get the date and time and then in that i am going to add hours now i am going to add more hours now i am i'm not going to add here i am going to add minus 10 here so i am adding what i am adding minus 10 hours here and then i am closing the bracket so what i am doing here i am saying the effective time that means i am i am saying this time i want the key to be effective 
and what time I am saying? I am saying get the time of today and add that into that today time and date, remove 10 from it. That means the machine will create the key, it is like older than 10 hours. And when you enter this, you will get the key here and you can use the key. Now you can create the service account. Otherwise, if you try to create the account, it will give you error because it says that the service account, uh, the key is not available. So key will be available after 10 hours, it will say. So what we did, we created the key by using this option, effective time option and reduce the minus 10 hours from it. Now we can create the service account. New AD service account, then we can name the service account, whatever we want. I, I will say SMS. Then we can mention Uh, DNS host name, the name for the server where we are going to use this account. Then we can add the group principal that allow to delegate the account. That is the account that is I will mention the ser uh, machine server one account here. So this is the one which is going to be update. This is the machine account which is going to update the password related information for this service account. Now when I create this account, we will go to the Active Directory users and computers and under the manage service account uh, container, when you refresh you can see the service account here. And you can see it is here saying that this is group manage service account. So we have added this here. This is the group managed service account because we have added this option here. Now we can use this account on the services and you can see it is a different account. It does not have any property. If you go to the properties of this account, you can see here nothing. Now this account, nobody can use this account to, to be the interactive login. If we use the normal account for services, any user can use this account to do the interactive login also. So that will also be not uh, uh, done by this service account. So this service account only used for services. So now we can use this. So we'll go to this services which we want to use the account. We'll go to the properties of that services, log on, and then we'll try to use the account name. We can browse, we can name it directly. Now remember password we have not configured, so we should remove the password because the passwords are managed by the group, the machine group which we have mentioned. So we mention this and then we can say apply and when we apply it says the account Psi SMS dollar has been granted the logon as a service right. So it is now have a, a service, the SPN. And now when you say OK, and it is now use this account for the services, for this specific service. So whatever the service you want, you can use this account for it. Then the SPNs and the Kerberos delegation. SPNs is the service principal name and Kerberos is the authentication protocol. So Kerberos delegation of authentication, the services can delegate the service ticket issued to them by the KDC to another service. So another service, the, the, the services can give the ticket to other services which is given by the KDC. The constraint delegation that means allow the administrator to define which service can use service ticket issued to the other services. Then SPNs help identify service uniquely. That means the SPN of the service account identify the service account used for the services uniquely. And in Windows Server 2016, it allows the constraint delegation across the domain. That means we can use the service account from one domain. Uh, uh, we have created in the domain controller, but we can use the account on the other systems also. And service administrator to configure the constraint delegation also. So this is today's topic. It is about securing our domain services, domain controllers by using the service, uh, the password and uh, different policies we have. We saw the password policy, lockout policy, 
fine grained policies and also we have seen the service account to manage the services.